we may not have see, seen many goals from the first checkup, but the level of energy was very good. Can they further enhance the quality of the play in the second checkup? Jason Dixon is all set to roll in the ball, and uh, the Reds will be attacking the fourth end of the ball. has been released by the umpire. Bashir Ali now. It's going to be Matt Perry, Matt Perry, Samir Swag. Bashir Ali, Samir Swag, Matt Perry, and it's Matt Perry gets onto the ball and tickles it forward. Matthew Perry, the sixth goal from United Kingdom for the team. Sahara Warriors strokes it firmly over the top onto Salim Azmi. Salim Azmi, Ian John. Salim Azmi marches away. Sends a chance of getting the equalizer. Salim Azmi does well to get the goal for the team. Excellent strike from Salim Azmi exacting the events of conceding his penalty in the first checkers equalizers 1-1 one, one. Salim Azmi receiving a fine pass from Matthew Perry, six scholar from United Kingdom and making no mistake on that occasion converting the goal successfully the pass was converted into a goal it's one all in the second checker and they're in for something magical in the second checker. The ball has been released by the umpire, and Matt Perry once again gets in there. Matt Perry plays a cut shot, slices that, but will be challenged by five caller from Hyderabad. Bashir Ali, Bashir Ali, and, and it's uh, Matt Perry. Matt Perry tickles it, turns and turns and tickles it forward, punches and punches. He's looking for some le leverage into the stroke, and that's a lovely net shot coming in from him. On to, on to one did goal a chance. Samir Swag gets in there. Samir Swag writes him up. Samir, Samir at plus five. Samir Swag gets forward, goes with the back end, not quite making the connection. Hurts Piramal in there. Hurts Piramal plays the back end. On to Bashir Ali. He turns and turns for Salim Azmi comes there. Bashir Ali, and it's going to be Matt Perry. Matt Perry on the ball. Matthew Perry at plus six. Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry under the Maroon helmet will be challenged by Bashir Ali. Bashir Ali now. Yen John. Yen John tickles it forward. Yen John gets in there. Yen John and Matt Perry from the near side. Tickles it, but he feeds it to who? Salim Azmi goes with the back end. Not quite making the connection. Bashir Ali comes there. Bashir Ali on the board at the moment. Bashir steadies himself and goes with the shot away on to Yen John trying to meet a running ball. And who's going to get in there? It's Hush Piramal. And Samir Swag coming from the back. Hush Piramal. Balloons the ball up in the air. And Yen John looking to collect from the near side. It's Yen John who's marching front. There comes the back end from Vandit Kolicha. On to Matt Perry. Samir Swag. Samir Swag. Matt Perry. Matt Perry in the air. Samir Swag. Two reds up front there. And Matt Perry reaches a fine shot on to Salim Azmi and Bashir Ali. Salim Azmi takes it forward. Salim Azmi but loses the ball momentarily on the bounce. Bashir Ali looks for the back end and he does well to tickle the ball back when he feeds it to the opposition player. It's Matt Perry. Matt Perry on the ball. Matthew Perry takes it forward. Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry and Yen John. Matthew Perry loses the ball momentarily but he regains the position. It's Matt Perry around uh, 40 yards from the goal mark. Matthew Perry takes it forward. Ian John to put immense pressure on him. Matthew Perry from the near side. Matthew Perry tries to work from the near side. A difficult angle, angle to execute for him. And the ball rolls out of play despite trying his very best to provide the much needed angle on the ball. World Open Sirmur Cup 14 goal tournament and uh, I've been joined by Jason Dixon officiating in this tournament and he's been coming to Jaipur for uh, quite some time. Jason, what are the big challenges when it comes to you know officiating in England and how different it is uh, officiating in India? Well, um, there's a few differences in the conditions. The, uh, the polo fields in Europe are usually a little bit easier to play on. They're a little bit s uh, smoother, so the polo is usually more flowing and a little bit easier for the players to hit the ball. Here, the challenges arise because the ball bounces quite a lot, but it's also very, very, very competitive. The teams here are all very, very good, very high standard, so every match is full of pressure, and most results are very close. So the bigger challenges for me are that the players behave in an appropriate manner. If they behave in a professional, calm manner, the game is usually better, I'm always trying to ensure that the environment is safe for the players and the horses. And if that's the case, I'm usually quite happy. Tell us something about the introduction of yellow cards. We saw two or three players being shown yellow card. For, was that because of the violent play or some other reason? Um, we award uh, yellow cards similar to soccer or rugby for players that are being abusive to the environment, that is, they may be abusive to each other, to the crowd, to the goal judges, or to the match officials. Also, we would award yellow cards to players that are playing in a potentially dangerous fashion. So they can use their horse, their sticks, and sometimes the ball in an aggressively dangerous manner. And we're trying to keep the environment safe. So when these players, if they get very upset emotionally, they become more unreliable and more likely to do something a little crazy. So we award the yellow flags to try to keep the players calm. And, and also, once a player crosses the, the line, 
where they are slightly out of control and they start becoming hazardous to the environment, we award yellow cards. Players have routine set set routine to follow on the match day. How, how is your routine like you know, on, on a match day? On a match day, typically, I don't like to associate too much with uh, the players. Uh, if I associate with any team, then I will do the same to the other team. So I have to behave in a professional manner, open and transparent, and, uh, and we're all professionals. When we come to the field, we need to respect each other mutually. So we all have respect. Um, I tend to be quiet. I like to be alone because I need half an hour to myself really to prepare my own mind and uh, be prepared for the different situations that may occur. And especially when it comes to controversial fouls because every time uh, a whistle goes and everyone is starts and talking about the foul, this was or this wasn't. How, how difficult it is for you to actually you know, make a judgment and then stick to it? Um, I've been umpiring for some time now, uh, so I'm, com I'm comfortable umpiring. However, I realize that uh, my decisions and the other umpire and the third man affect, will affect the outcome of the game. Um, I do this a lot. I'm well prepared. I'm very serious about it. I believe I have good judgment. And the majority of people will probably, when it comes to the end, uh, they'll, they'll agree that, generally speaking, my judgment is good, fair, and as accurate as possible. Saying that, I do realize that I'm only in one position at a time on the polo field and it's impossible for me to have 100% pure judgment and pure accuracy and we really need the spectators and the players to understand that it's just a judgment that I need to make at a time when things are difficult on the polo field. An umpire doesn't get into position to make a decision on easy plays because easy plays don't need the interpretation of a judge. We are only called, our judgment is only called upon when things are difficult, when two players are arriving at the ball at the same time, for example. Then we have to decide who had the premier right to go to the ball. So um, hopefully, I'm, I'm happy with my job. I tend to, when I make a decision, I'm a, it's a confident decision. If I don't see something clearly, then I won't make a decision. And last question, because final coming up next, any any specific preparation for semi-finals and finals? Much pressure game, we will have more crowd in also. Um, I quite like the, the feeling and the pressure from crowds. It builds to a good occasion. I think it's very good in a city like Jaipur, which has a really good polo history, and India as a country also. I think it's really special that the crowd have such an interest and knowledge. I'm very flattered. Uh, that many of the crowd would say I, they think I'm a good umpire. I do not expect them to be happy with my judgment every day. But uh, the, the, I don't really get affected whether the match is a first round match, a semi-final or a final, because I have to treat every match the same. So on a daily basis, I umpire a match and I have the same preparation and I think it's the same importance to everyone. Um, and if it's your first round match, it's equally as important as a semi-final because teams need to win. So I don't change my approach to a semi-final or a final. A lot of people come here to witness the game of polo. If they want to become a polo umpire, what, is, what are the two advices that you want to give it to them? Well, uh, to become an umpire in polo, it's very, very useful to have played and have a lot of playing experience knowledge of the cultures that where you are so cultures in different countries vary people behave differently so we, you must respect the cultures of the local environment that you're in and have as much experience of playing and umpiring polo as possible um, secondly you must be confident in yourself and you must be authentic and honest and well prepared Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much for speaking to us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, he's been a consistent umpire throughout the throughout the year and, and in many years before that. So that would be very interesting to see how he makes his judgment under pressure when crowd will come in large number and big finals coming up next. That's it from the Rambag Polo Ground for the moment.